This is the Crush Crowdfunding Podcast, the number one place for people who want to launch on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. My name is Nalin, and I invite you to join me for tips, hacks, and insights to get you launched and fully funded. Hey everyone, welcome to another session of the Crush Crowdfunding Podcast. I'm really excited to have you here today and to really talk to you about crowdfunding and how you can absolutely crush your goal on Kickstarter and absolutely crush your goal on Indiegogo. Today I really wanted to talk about something that I'm really passionate about because a lot of people just tend to forget it. Right? A lot of people tend to think, okay, I have a new cool crowdfunding idea. I have a new cool crowdfunding project. And so everything I do has to be completely novel and innovative and never been seen before, right? Because it's crowdfunding. So everyone's like, okay, it has to be new. It has to be novel. It has to be absolutely cutting edge, the world's first something or another, right? But one of the things that I've seen really honestly work well is to model other things at work. Right. That's like one of the key things I tell people when they start working on their crowdfunding projects to really just model after what works. And what that means is it starts all the way from, you know, figuring out your audience and figuring out, you know, the graphics you use and figuring out the visual assets that you're going to have. Right. What this comes to is that you have to really go into the details of other similar projects or other similar products and look what's worked for them and what doesn't work for them. This same exact strategy is was is is you know taken from businesses, every business out there, Pepsi and Coke. You know, Coke has been around a lot longer than Pepsi, right? And then Pepsi came to the market and they were like, what is Coke doing to get all these people to drink the this drink, this pop fizzy sugary drink and what can I do to gain a big market share like Coke and get people super addicted to my drink? And so what they did was they just figured out what Coke was doing with companies like uh, big companies, like real companies, right? That are in the market. People, they just look at what's successful, what's what's out there, what's doing things really successfully. And they just model after what works, right? Coke and Pepsi. Pepsi just those are what Coke was doing and just did the exact same things, right? Honestly, they taste kind of the same to me. I don't know if you're a Coke fan or a Pepsi fan. If you're a Coke fan or a Pepsi fan, feel free to like let me know. <laughs> I honestly can't tell the difference. <laughs> it's kind of the same way with crowdfunding, right? When you want to launch a product, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's no need to reinvent the wheel at all. Yes, your product is cool and novel and new and exciting, but the way you market it and the way you get it out in front of people you don't have to reinvent that wheel at all. The system and the process to make crowdfunding work has been tried and tested over and over and over and over again. And it's, you know, the same system has helped raise hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of dollars. And so there's no reason to reinvent the wheel when it comes to that process of launching your crowdfunding campaign, your idea to the crowdfunding world, right? On Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And it all comes down to really seeing what works in your category and following those same steps in your own way. So let's take, let's take an example. Okay. If you have a new product, say it's new product that helps that okay, let's say it's headphones right let's say it's headphones right just something kind of similar to this maybe it's wireless or something like that right and so if you have these new headphones that you want to launch what do you do what's your first step to figure out this whole launch process well i say model what works go out and look at every single headphone campaign that's out there on kickstarter on indiegogo on any other platform that you want to launch on right if it's seed and spark if it's we funder if it's start engine whatever crowdfunding platform there is just go look at what other people are doing go look at campaigns that weren't successful go look at campaigns that were successful and just see what they've done right what did they do uh, what did the campaigns that weren't successful what kind of things did they do that were kind of similarities write those things down campaigns that were really successful find similarities between them and write those things down so that you know kind of like what to model out off of 
for success and what to kind of steer clear of when it comes to campaigns that just don't make it and don't fund, right? Honestly, it's it's kind of baffling to me sometimes that people kind of forget to do this one really important step just to really model after what works, see what, like look at things out there that work for your particular category. So if it's headphones, what I would do, the first thing I do is I'd look at every single headphone campaign out there and see which ones have funded 10,000, which ones have funds in the hundreds of thousands, which ones have funds in the millions and just make note of those things. And if I see, for example, in campaigns that have reached millions of, of dollars, that's a headphone campaign. I see that there's these three publications that have featured all three of these um, headphone products on Indiegogo and crowdfunding. I'm going to think to myself, well, clearly something about that particular publication is really pertinent to the audience of headphones, right? People who want headphones probably read or read that publication, probably, you know, listen to that podcast, probably, you know, watch that YouTube channel, right? And so what I do is make it a priority to reach out to the journalists, to the writers, to the owners, to the editors of that particular publication that has written about these he- these he- other headphones that I've seen that have raised millions of dollars on crowdfunding, right? You're modeling what works. You're modeling what other people have done to get to that point, right? There's no need to reinvent the wheel. There's no need to start from scratch and just go through some random site and hope that they write about crowdfunding projects and hopefully that and hope that they write about headphones. There's no need to do that look at other people, look at other successful campaigns and just make that list and start from there. Start from what already works because if they've written about crowdfunding projects and they've written about headphones, they're probably going to want to know more about cool new headphones that are coming to the market. Their readers are probably going to want to know more about cool crowdfunding headphones that are being launched. And as a journalist, as a press person, as a content creator, they need to bring new exciting content to their readers. So they're more likely to read your pro- read about your pitch, read about your product, and just write about you, right? So that's just one thing, just like modeling what works, just seeing what else is there, right? Not only am I gonna look at like pitch right, and press, right? I'm gonna look at the structure of the page, what's on the crowdfunding page itself, right? I'm not gonna just kind of pull out a random arrangement to the story part of the campaign from just in the middle of nowhere in my brain, right? There's there's no reason to do that. If you look at different campaigns that have done this before, that have succeeded before, you'll see there's patterns. You'll see that people talk about, you know, they introduce the product, they show some social proof, and then they go into like the technical aspects. They talk about the benefits of the product. And the cool thing is the more like specific you get into the categories when you're looking at the different competitors you can see patterns emerge in that particular campaign so with apparel for example if you're launching an apparel like a jacket or pants or something you'll see that right after people list the rewards people are also going to list a sizing chart right and when people and when the backer will give the size on indiegogo the backer might give the size right away when they check out on kickstarter the the pay, that part of the page might say, hey, here's your sizing chart and we're going to take your size after the campaign ends, right? So if you just look at the previous campaigns and see how they're, they've laid things out, how they've kind of um, built their campaign, you'll see really great similarities and you'll see kind of the building blocks, what the building blocks are for successful campaigns. Um, not only that, but... You know, we talked about rewards. We talked about the page structure. We've talked about, actually, we haven't talked about rewards in detail. Let me talk about rewards in detail too. That's another thing that you can really, really look at when you're looking at different campaigns. If you're going to be launching like a uh, like a drone or something, no, I use drones a lot. Let's say if you're launching a new type of microphone, right? If you're launching like a new microphone that you know attaches to your lapel or something like that you want to make sure to look at other microphones on crowdfunding and see what types of rewards they offer do they offer only the product itself to people do they offer do they offer things like digital add-ons like 
how to like if you get one microphone you also get a digital download of like how to start your own podcast or something right or if you're launching a movie right if you're launching a movie do you just give physical rewards like a mug with the movie name on it right is that what is common when it comes to launching films on indiegogo and films on kickstarter or is it more like digital things like hey I'm going to do a social media shout out like the actor themselves are going to do a social media shout out for you and pledge for this campaign. What is it that is common when it comes to rewards for your particular category? Because that's going to give you ideas of what backers of that category on that platform want. Right. And it's going to give you ideas of what you should be thinking about providing to the people who are going to back your project. Right. It's so, it's so easy guys. It's just, just look at what has worked before and make sure to kind of model after it. I'm not saying copy every single thing, right? Don't copy, but model. If things are successful, do it, but in your own cool way. If you're seeing that a lot of people who back movies love getting like a signed physical version of the screenplay or the script, for example, that's probably going to be one of your main rewards that you offer for your crowdfunding campaign. Like a no brainer. Okay. So yeah, we talked about rewards. We talked about kind of page structure. We talked about, I'm totally blanking what we talked about before my dog barked. So those kind of things, you know, model what works. And this also, also really, really applies to the crowdfunding process, the actual process to get a campaign on crowdfunding. Model what works, guys. And what works, what works is one, creating a landing page, right? I'm creating a landing page that tells people the information about your product, whatever your product is, right? Tell the information about the product. Send traffic to that landing page. Send traffic of interested people. Send like, send, send people who are interested in this particular product to that landing page who, so they can learn more about the product and they can give you their email so that you can build an email list because your email list is just literally a collection of people who are excited about your product, right? Excited about prepaying for a product before it's even made. That's nuts to me. It's crazy to me, that idea. But yeah, you create a landing page, you send people there and start collecting emails of these interested fans. And what you do for a, a crowdfunding campaign is that you push those people who came to your landing page to your crowdfunding campaign. That is the most simple, simplest way to get funded. Yeah, sure. Like tactically speaking, there's a lot more to it. But that if you don't do that process all the way before you press that big launch button, I can tell you for sure that you're not getting funded, right? If you do, you probably got lucky. There's no way that you can replicate that success ever again because you probably had a fluke somewhere, right? The crowdfunding process that um, others have used before works and it works for a reason. It works because what you're doing is building up a fan base, building up a fan base of people who are super excited about a product and you're telling them about the product beforehand. You're telling them about the price point. You're telling them about the reasons why you want to create the product. You're telling them the reasons why you want to launch this product and you're forming that relationship with them so that they believe in you. They believe in your vision. They believe in your company. They believe in um, what you want to do for humanity. They want, they believe in, you know, the, 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 fact that you can actually make it and actually send it and deliver it to the world, right? So that's why the process works because you're building up this group of people who are going to be obsessed with your product, who love what you're doing. And they're telling you that, hey, I really want to help support you make this idea. And I really want to, you know, give you funds so that you can make this product and bring it to light. And so... And once you have this group of people, this group of like engaged fans and it is groups of like internet strangers who are just willing to take a chance on you, right? Of course your crowdfunding campaign is going to launch and get funded because you have these people who are supporting you and 
wanting your project to to come to life, to make a difference, to to be, you know, to to be made. And so this same process that I'm telling you about, this like modeling what works, I want you to really make this part of your psyche, right? I want to, I want this to, I want you to think of this as something that needs to happen in all facets of creating, marketing, delivering um, a product, right? Because it, you can use the same exact thought process in any, 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 any um, part of the process. So if you're looking for an audience, right? If you're looking to see where your audience is, right? Like, who's my audience? Where are these people? Where am I going to find these people who love my product? Ah, right? A lot of people freak out about that. Model what works, guys. So what this means is if you're um, launching a new backpack, right? A backpack with like an integrated power bank that's waterproof, you can charge your laptop on the go, something like that, right? Lots of, this has been done before, right? It's not a completely novel thing. It might just be a twist on this kind of backpack, right? So if this is you, just look at these previous campaigns and see where their audience is. They probably have like a big Facebook group. There's probably Reddit threads about it. There's probably um, forums, hiking forums. There's probably like online meetup groups. There's probably so many different places that talk about this and that um, these audiences are gathering, right? If you're going to launch like an, an outdoor like hiking backpack, right, what I'm talking about, you know, like I'd look at brands like REI, like where are people who love shopping at REI talking? What podcasts are they listening to? What kind of bloggers are they reading? What kind of influencers are they following? Like who else can you kind of befriend in order to tap into that exact audience, right? There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Just like look at what other people are doing and where these people are hanging out that are successful for your particular category and tap into that, right? Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't just go from zero and be like, hmm, okay, doing a hiking backpack. Let's test to see if people who are, who love astronauts want to buy this backpack or buy. let's test to see if people who want to be pilots want to get this backpack like guys no the the most simple thing the lowest hanging fruit the path of least resistance is to go with the flow and by going with the flow you just model what works you just model what has been out there before what's what's been working in the past right there's no need to reinvent the wheel at all. Just model what works and go with the flow. Um, so yeah, we talked about kind of audience finding an audience and how using modeling what works can work. Mm, what else can you do this with? Let's okay, let's talk about fulfillment, right? Fulfillment is a really hard one that people have to think about too when it for crowdfunding. Like, how am I gonna actually get this product shipped out to people to all these different countries, to all these different places, all these different locations? Like, heck model what works guys just take a look at different campaigns and get in touch with the creator ask them hey which fulfillment companies did you use were there any problematic deliveries are there any countries that were harder to access were there any like pitfalls or hiccups that i have to kind of think about before i lock down which countries that the product should be shipped to so there's all these questions that you can ask the creator of the same category and they'll tell you exactly what went well, what was problematic, and give you advice on what to do. Right? That's one one way to model what works. Just like literally ask them, hey, which countries were like easiest to ship to? Was there any like unforeseen costs that I should be, you know, pre-baking into my my spreadsheets for costs or anything? So like just asking them, right? Other things you can do is literally just reaching out to fulfillment companies and just talking to them and seeing for a similar project for a similar campaign, for a similar product to them on this particular platform, whether it's Kickstarter, whether it's Indiegogo, whether it's whatever, Shopify, right? Seeing if they've done this before and if there's anything they can tell you because they've done it before and you can literally model what has worked because they'll have information, they'll have data points, they'll have literal just in like just downloadable information that they can send to you so that you know all this 
So yeah, modeling what works. It is one of the key things to do. And, you know, like from a kind of big picture perspective, right? From a big picture perspective, modeling what works makes it easier too as an entrepreneur, as a creator, right? Me, myself as an entrepreneur, you know, I it took a long time just trying to reinvent the wheel, just trying to be like, hey, what do I do to like get my name out there? What do I do to make sure that people see, see me and know me and know my services, my offerings? Like I spent a lot of time just kind of building from zero. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, I could literally just look at how other people have successfully built their businesses and reverse engineered it, right? You can look at different, like different entrepreneurs on their Instagrams, on their Facebooks, on their, you know, online courses. They literally go through the steps they took in order to get to where they are today. Like Pat Flynn has this thing that I follow Pat Flynn all the time. Pat Flynn runs Smart Passive Income. And he was fired in 2008 and built thriving business because he just kept trying and testing different things. And he just opens his like, opens his heart and soul to you and tells you how exactly to build your business. Right. And so me as an entrepreneur, I'm like, why did I spend time trying to figure things out and start from scratch when all these people are, are literally willing and able to help and want you to succeed too right so like big picture is that it's easier it's easier to model what works it's easier to really go in and see what's been done before and how you can replicate it or how you can model it in a way that works for you right in the way that, and again i need to emphasize how, in a way that works for you I need to emphasize that because not everyone's the same, right? Some people are great at doing these video things, right? Some people just love doing video. They're just a natural speaker on video. And so they do video. Some love writing. I am a huge writer. I love reading and I love writing. And that's why I spent my time writing and churning out blogs and blogs and blogs and blogs because that's what I, I love doing. It's my passion to write. I'm a writer at heart, right? Some people find that it it's like pulling teeth to write, right? Some people hate writing, right? And so they do things like start a podcast or how to po- host a podcast, right? So when you're thinking about how to go about launching your crowdfunding campaign, the things that I can tell you are that there are things, there are processes that have worked, processes, processes that have worked already to build up a crowd and build up a following and get that following to convert into backers. Make sure you model after those processes. The way that you build a crowd, the way that you build a following can be unique to you because not everyone's the same, right? I'm a writer and so I'll write a lot of things and build a following that way. But you might not be that way. You might be a video person and you might want to record a YouTube video every, you know, three times a day, just start building the following that way. And that's fine, right? So use that process, make it your own and model what works because it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be easy. And it's, you're going to enjoy the process so much more and you start modeling what works. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Modeling what works. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Crush Cod Funding Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode or found it helpful in any way, be sure to leave a review so that other people will have an easier time finding this crowdfunding content. I hope that this podcast was helpful in your crowdfunding journey, and I can't wait for you to go out and crush it. Thanks for listening to the Crush Crowdfunding Podcast at crushcrowdfunding.com. Tune in the same time next week for more ways to crush your launch.